It is the first time world and business leaders have gathered at Davos since January 2020, before the coronavirus pandemic. It is a changed world. Among the first leaders to address delegates by video link was Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky, dressed not in the uniform of the Davos elite, but the army fatigues of a wartime leader. He demanded maximum sanctions on Russia. An embargo on Russian oil, a complete blockade of all Russian banks, without exception, total abandonment of the Russian IT sector and complete cessation of trade with the aggressor. Do not wait for fatal shots. Do not wait for Russia's use of special weapons, chemical, biological, God forbid, nuclear. Ukraine has sent a large delegation to Davos. Every one of you have to understand, we're defending you personally. We're fighting for values. I hope we say values, democratic values. The Ukrainian delegation has been warmly welcomed, but their demands for a complete embargo on Russian energy and trade are far from being met. Germany continues to import Russian gas, as does Hungary, which is resisting efforts towards an EU-wide embargo on Russian oil imports. I expect everyone, also Hungary, that they work to find a solution and not saying, OK, we have an exception and then we will lay back and build on our partnership with Putin. Some business leaders said isolating Russia would take time. This is a fight that we can't fully participate in, but we're trying to do our best, I think that's a little bit of things. But you feel a little helpless if you stand there and see what the Ukrainians have to do for us, to stand for our values and to stand for our uh, lives. Russian delegates haven't been invited. Instead, the former Russia House in Davos has been transformed into what's been dubbed the Russian War Crimes House, depicting alleged atrocities carried out by the Kremlin's forces. Here in Davos, say, the world's most powerful people come together. And through them, we also have to show who is suffering and why they are suffering. Many of the 2,000 delegates at Davos have voiced strong condemnation of Russia's invasion and support for Ukraine. But it remains to be seen whether this alpine gathering will result in any further economic pressure on Moscow. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London.